and welcome. So this right here is a IBM ThinkPad 600X in a very high entropy state. I've got this machine a couple of years ago and not long after that it refused to boot up. So the issue with this uh, is basically uh, the dreaded error that's related to the track point on the keyboard, uh, namely error 8611. So basically when this thing starts up, uh, the BIOS does uh, the power on selfless and one of the items on the selfless is the keyboard track point. So if it detects there is some issue with the track point, uh, it uh, basically uh, redirects you to a screen that shows a picture of the service manual and, and a stop symbol. Uh, there is a way to disable the track point. Uh, so if you happen to get into the BIOS, you can strike a secret key combination that would uh, bring up the hex editor and allow you to disable the track point. But unfortunately, uh, due to this error uh, 8611, you cannot really get into the BIOS. And yeah, so in this sort of catch edit situation, I've, I've actually spent, well, I've been fighting with this laptop for about two or three years now. So the only uh, reasonable way to fix that is to get a new keyboard. And so I did after about three years of uh, trying not to get a new keyboard and fix it in a different way, uh, including desoldering the track point, uh, doing all sorts of weird stuff, resoldering the track point, etc. etc. Anyway, so this keyboard is basically dead, so we can get rid of it. And in this video, we're gonna install the new keyboard, test it, and put uh, all of this back together. Right, so this right here is the back of the laptop uh, with the main board inside and the CPU right here on a removable uh, card that goes into a socket. And this part right here is the keyboard connector. Uh, it's on uh, this sort of riser board that also contains the uh, the backlight for the LCD and some of the diagnostic LEDs, uh, as well as the microphone and the power LED uh, alongside with the uh, a lead detection switch. So first of all we have to uh, mount the screen because otherwise uh, it's going to be difficult later on. Okay so having that in place we can install the keyboard which uh, generally connects to the motherboard with this uh, sort of weird uh, 180 degrees bent uh, Flaflex cable which is uh, rather difficult to install at first, but if you've done this a million times, then it's pretty much uh, just, uh, it's quite easy. Now what I would do would be to actually turn it on and test whether the new keyboard doesn't have the same symptom, because uh, this is a rather old machine. It's, uh, I believe it's 1999, so, uh, all of this part is basically new old stock or uh, taken from a, a similar uh, and a similarly old machine uh, uh, as well because I think the, that this keyboard was using a couple of different models as well. So let me get the power supply and we can turn this thing on finally. Mm, yeah, so there was a plastic uh, power switch right here because uh, as uh, some of these older ThinkPads, this one ha has got a uh, power sort of slide switch on the side. Uh, so let's push this thing to power it on. And watch the screen for boot errors. Right, so we've got error 0161 and 0163, which means that the uh, dreaded 8611 has gone, and I would expect this track point to fully work. Yes, that's right. Uh, these errors are, uh, if I recall correctly, they are re related to the uh, uh, lack of the post battery, which uh, which actually was there as well. So uh, currently there's just a C or two of thirty two uh, sort of socket uh, mm, <laughs> retrofitted in this funny way. Uh, let's go ahead and continue We're setting the date.
let's say zero seconds. So this is four to eleven. That's rather late in the evening, but actually late repairs are the best. Alrighty, uh, we've got sixty-four uh, megabytes of memory reported. Mm. You might as well install the uh, CR232. Mm. Hmm. Why is it telling me to redo it? Yeah, because as you would expect, the original BIOS battery uh, it was completely dead. Mm. So I basically took the uh, the connector from that BIOS battery and uh, installed it. Uh, soldered it to this uh, 232 socket. Alright, so we're getting uh, this image is probably uh, related to lack of any bootable medium because the CD-ROM uh, is right here and the hard disk is non-existent. Okay, but we're good to go. We've uh, got a working keyboard fitted so I'm going to bring up the hardware reference manual and so the hardware man maintenance manual and just put this thing back together. Nothing falls out, that's good. Uh, while we are here we might actually install the RAM as well. This right here is the most vital part of the uh, ThinkPad assembly. So I've been trying to actually boot a couple of different things on this. And so far the only uh, Linux distribution that runs on this thing, uh, bear in mind that it has only uh, 40, 64 megabytes of memory, is uh, Slita's Linux uh, in the low RAM flavor, uh, which is Linux 2.6 with a couple of uh, useful uh, utilities and it boots off the CD-ROM. Um, pretty nifty. I've tried Void uh, live, uh, the i386 version. It it's basically Linux 4.0 on a CD. Uh, it runs out of memory very early on on boot. Uh, I've tried Minix just for the kicks, and it would not boot at all. Uh, for some odd reason, it doesn't boot uh, many of the CDs uh, they throw at it. Well, obviously bearing in mind that this is a 32-bit machine, not much uh, is uh, not man not much software is actually still supported for this. Initially, the, the RAM stick for this thing was uh, seated the wrong way, uh, so I've uh, reseated it, and now we've got 64 megs of onboard memory and 64 megs of external memory. By the way, this thing takes uh, only 100 megahertz. Uh, so dims. So if you put a different one, it just errors out. And this means we've got some extra memory, uh, about 130 something megabytes. And that means we can actually boot Void Linux on that thing. So this is pretty much uh, all for now. Uh, I've got this laptop uh, up and running, uh, able to boot most of the CDs that I throw at it, uh, with a small RAM expansion that will happen as soon as I find uh, proper parts. I will definitely uh, give it a try installing uh, Linux permanently on this thing. 
And for that reason, I've actually ordered two IDE 442 SATA adapters, and I'll be trying to retrofit an SSD disk uh, in place of the old spinner. If you've enjoyed this video, that's all for now, and catch you later.